So here you are, sitting at YouTube watching my videos, most likely because you don't have any awesome games to play. And that probably stems from your lack of money, which can be a result of you having to drive nine jillion miles to get to work every day, or your job doesn't pay you enough, or you just have several other expenses in your life. Whatever the case may be, I'm not here to judge. I'm going to show you some just incredibly amazing games that you can grab for under $10, and in some cases, under $5. For the first installment of Cheap Awesome Games, Will Loves, I'll be covering uh, Freedom Force and Freedom Force vs. the Third Reich. Yes, there are two games in one interview, but they're like the same game, in the sense that you really should play the first one so you can get all of the story of the second one. Because in the second one you'll see all these characters returning and you will not give a crap because this is your first time seeing them as opposed to when I played and it was the greatest deal ever when the guy in the ant costume walked back on the screen. So if you're a fan of superheroes or just uh, small squad strategy games this one is definitely worth the look. Uh, I, I saw like both of them on Steam as a package deal is like seven dollars fifty cents, and for two games that boast near limitless uh, time play playability, I've replay I've gotten at least fifty hours of mileage out of the second game because it has a uh, a rumble room. But we'll get into that in a minute. The rumble room lets you. Uh, choose whatever enemies you want to fight, or if you want to do like a... what are those called? An Iron Man sort of thing, or a endless waves of thugs coming at you, or what have you. You get to do it. You can play against the enemies from the first game, you can play against the enemies from this game. It's fantastic, and you choose your four guys, and if you don't like the characters that the game offers you to play as, guess what? You can make your own damn superheroes. You can, uh, and people have released mods and skins all over the internet. None recently, because this game is kind of old, but they already have all your favorite superheroes out there. I've seen like 200 different kinds of Spider-Men you can download and put into your game. Every Marvel character you could possibly imagine, every DC character, they're all available, and you can download extra uh, special effects and whatnot, so you can actually put them in your game. And look, you can even be a mother Tyrannosaurus Rex, and if that's not getting you excited about this game, I don't know what is. You can create your own character. It's an amazing set. Like, you can strength, all the stats go from 1 to 10. You can buy them in your campaign and have them work on your team. But depending on how, like, badass amazing you made them, they cost extra prestige points, which is what you earn throughout the game for doing secondary objectives and just completing missions, etc., etc. Another reason to pick up both games instead of just the second one is because in the first game, it sort of sets up the story for a lot of the reoccurring villains, which is, you know, really important since they're reoccurring villains. Uh, and it's just a great game with an awesome story, and it makes you feel like you're in an olden days comic book. Freedom Force vs. the Third Reich, well, by the name alone, you can assume you're going to be fighting Nazis, which you do that a lot of. You fight lots and lots of Nazis in different Nazi-oriented scenarios. So, the enemy variation isn't drastically different in the second game. That's another reason to pick up the first one, just for a little variety in your campaign. But it it, feel, it does feel justified. The second story, the second game story is beautiful and well thought out, and I love it. Uh, but it's, it's different eras of comics between each game. The first game is like old school comics, alien invasions, and just other sp super powered humans that you have to fight against. In the second one, it's the World War II comics, where every superhero is beating the crap out of Nazis, because at this point in time, nobody likes Nazis. Another thing about these games that's very well done is the dialogue between two characters. Uh, they have very witty, funny dialogue that uh, makes you glad you watched the cutscene instead of just pushing escape and skipping it. They're clever, it's unique, and lo there's lots of personality going on. It, it, it's not just because it's detrimental to the overall story that you watch the cutscene, you actually want to watch what each character has to say. And depending on which people you have in your team, 
During the in-mission cutscenes, you might get different responses to scenarios. It won't alter the storyline, but you'll get a different hilarious remark every time, so that adds to the replayability. So, let me just wrap things up by saying these are very fun games. I thoroughly enjoyed them when they came out, and I still enjoy them to this day. And so, you should probably pick these up if you've got $8 lying around. If you don't, well then, uh, I suggest you put that money towards a pizza, because uh, nothing's ever wrong with pizza. Unless, of course, you go to somewhere terrible like, say, Hungry Howie's. Uh, I've got some horror stories about me, some hungry howies. Mm. Roaches in the pizza. No joke, baked right into the crust. Terrible, terrible cesspool. And I will do everything in my power to ruin that business. But, uh, Freedom Force, great business. Wish they'd make a third one. They planned on making a third one, but could not get the funding because these games were so underrated. But, uh, yeah. That just means they're cheap now, and here's your opportunity to pick them up, kids. Have fun!